Hello, welcome to The Nursing Dose uh, with your host, Farah, aka Dr. Laurent, aka Nurse Career Coach. Today, we're going to be talking about how to find your joy in nursing, right? How to find a joyful nursing career. And I have a special guest today. I have Georgette Co. I'm so happy to have you on. Um, and if you want to tell everybody hello and tell them a little bit about yourself. Hello, everybody. I'm so happy to he to be here <laughs> talking to uh, Dr. Laurent, Farah Laurent, about uh, finding joy in the nursing career. Um, I've been a nurse now for over 15 years and very diverse background. And uh, I'm a nurse case manager right now. I also own my health and wellness coaching company called Evolve Fullness. And I do have a website. I am an author. I published a book in July last year uh, called Coming Back to My Body. I think there's some of them in the background over there. And um, I'm a speaker. I've pretty much been doing educational talks and I'm trying to see how I can break out into, you know, better, bigger stages, uh, not just always um, educational. So I am a mom and I'm single. And uh, let's see, what other layers do I have? Plenty. <laughs> I'm a long distance runner. So there, I'll leave it at that. Awesome. Well, such a pleasure to have you. I'm so excited to be talking about this conversation because we know that uh, the nursing industry and healthcare business uh, really uh -huh. need um, to find joy in nursing. And we're going to talk about these points and share some tips with the audience out there. Um, if you don't mind, just like just turn your volume down just a little bit. Um, so let me know, guys, where you're watching from. Let me know um, how you find joy in your nursing career in the chat. Let me know where you're watching from, city, country. We would love to know. And if you happen to be watching the replay, please also put any comments down. And I would be happy to go back and um, be able to answer any questions that you may have. So let's get into it. So how to find joy, right? So nursing obviously is a very rewarding career, but it is also very challenging. So we have five tips for you guys, and we're going to you know, evolve on each of the tips. So the number one tip we have is really, even in nursing school, right, you need to figure out really what your purpose is, um, establish your values, and then really understand what impact are you trying to make, right, in nursing, uh, in the nursing world, uh, and, you know, what communities or populations you want to make an impact. And so, you know, talk to me a little bit about that. Like, how did you find kind of your purpose, uh, values, and the impact that you want to make? Uh, first of all, the way I got into the medical field is because as a little girl, I was quite sickly. So I was the child that was always, I was very blessed. My dad had friends who were doctors, so I had concierge medicine at home. My mom <laughs> partially went to nursing school, so if I needed IVs, my mom started them. She stopped them. She monitored them. And I got fascinated with the human body and being able to, I think I, I got a glimpse into the medical field through comfort, knowing that I was getting comfort. And that was a big draw to me. It's like, oh, this is some amazing thing. They put this thing in my arm and then I'm feeling better. And the only time I was in the hospital was if I ever needed surgery or maybe blood drawn for whatever reason. Right. So I got to see just a little bit as a little girl and just kind of fell in love with the medical industry. And I think after when I was about seven years old, my yearly gift was like a, a doctor said <laughs> as a little girl. So that's how I got in there. And because I was also, you know, drawn to that and just kind of fell into it, I learned how to be very uh, passionate about learning. And so that's the one thing that drew me there was that, okay, this is a scientific field. We're always in learning mode. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed that because I easily get bored when I'm not, when you go so many stretches of you've not learned something new. Uh, you know, you kind of feel like you're in an echo chamber with the same people all the time. But being open to learning and creating those avenues for me to continue learning was the thing that really drew me to nursing. It was medicine at first. My dad was like, oh, we need to send her to med school. 
I was done with high school. I was tired of being in school. And you wanted me to do seven more years? No way. I was not ready for that. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I went to Henderson State University here in Arkansas and uh, got my bachelor's degree in nursing, which eventually my dad was super proud of. <laughs> so it was nice to see that mindset shift from, I don't know why she's not a doctor type situation, but I absolutely enjoy being a nurse. Yeah, and I think that's interesting because a lot of, I think, um, parents, right, especially uh, being a uh, first-gen uh, immigrant myself, a lot of, uh, I think, parents sometimes push their kids to be, you know, I call it like the, the, the top three, right? It's like engineering, lawyer, or doctor, right? It's like, oh, you got to be these things, right? So, um, because I experienced some of that too. I wanted to be a nurse. I always knew that. Um, and then they're like, are you sure you don't want to be a doctor? I'm like, no, I don't want to be a doctor. I want to be a nurse. Because I just loved that interaction with people. And I felt like nurses spent more time with people. So really, I think our advice to anybody watching, especially if you're a nursing student or a new graduate nurse, um, you know, as a career coach, my mission is really to empower nurses um, to be bold and to be confident and to go after what they want. So the number one thing sometimes in nursing school is we're kind of told, I feel like these old school narratives, like, oh, you should do this, you should do that, you shouldn't do this. And I think we want to break all those stereotypes because nursing is so vast and there's so much to do. So what I say to people who are confused, even if you're an experienced nurse watching this, um, if you feel burnt out or you're tired, I always say, uh, or you don't feel motivated or fulfilled anymore in your current role, I always say, like, go back to your reflection and go back to your purpose, right? Because I always say, once you're in your purpose, you're always going to find direction. So really, that's number one, I think, is to find joy in nursing is to always go back to your purpose. And it's okay to change. You know, people sometimes feel uh, like they don't want to change or they get too comfortable. But I think change is exciting, right? It keeps things fresh. Um, and that's the joy about nursing. There are so many different roles. Uh, and then obviously like the values, right? Um, if you're somewhere where maybe the values don't align with your values anymore, then it's it's time to get out. Especially, you know, I just wrote an article yesterday about um, finding work environments that are healthy because there's a lot of people that are stuck in these unhealthy work environment. So it's very important to really make sure that you're in alignment with your values. Um, so what are your thoughts on, on that? So the part about finding, going back to your purpose, which I'm glad you said can change because mm -hmm. what I've found is, is that I will meet so many nurses who have this fire, this burning to want to do something different and something outside of the norm, which is generally bedside. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I first left the bedside and everybody went, oh, oh my gosh, are you sure that you're going to be okay? And, you know, you lose all your skills. And I, I said, even if I went back to the bedside, it'll take me a few weeks and I'll be able to just, it, there's muscle memory with a lot of things. Right. And right. you know what I'm saying? And I said, but you, your life also changes. My life changed. I, I, I became a single parent. The needs were different. So I had to find something away from the bedside. Mm -hmm. And I stumbled through it the first couple of years. I had a couple of jobs where I was like, okay, this is not it. Oh, this is not it type situation. And then I found the thing that I enjoyed doing the most. And the purpose remained, honestly. I think it's just mm -hmm. sometimes at the bedside, it seems like the only place that you can go higher is managerial leadership and this and the other. And depending on the environment that you're in, sometimes they don't even train you properly or send you to a class or a conference or any leadership management kind of training. So people generally learn on the job. Some people, it works out for them because they have natural leadership talents and mm -hmm. other people just fail miserably at it because the idea of managing people and being a leader is not what it actually is. And as our job is one of where we are servants, we're generally giving to people. And at a certain time, you want to keep giving, but you want to do it in a different way, in a different capacity. Right. So right. yes, check your value system, make sure it's the right environment for you and this, that, and the other. And I know that there are plenty of nurses who are terrified. The difference between us talking and all the other nurses who left the bedside was action. 
right? Yeah. It was just action, just take the action, start looking and really learning, just go and read a lot about the places that you want to work for and find out if their mission and their vision and their values are aligned with yours. If you're blessed enough to know people who are where you're trying to work, ask them about their leadership and things like that. Right. So right. I know that there's so many things changing in the work environment in general. So I feel like um, at some point we need to go back to being able to call and be like, hey, I'm looking for a nursing position. What do you have? And I found two people. It's not a common thing, but I'm urging everyone to kind of look for it because unless we look for it, people don't give it to us. It's to be able to at least tour a facility or just talk to somebody for 30 right. minutes. Right. To find out, okay, this is really what I'm getting into. So, right. Or, or you can contact me. I'm a nurse career coach and I will. Yes. <laughs> yes. Contact her. Please do. <laughs> okay. And then we're going to go on to our second point of really how to find joy in nursing. If you're watching us, um, please let us know where you're watching from. Let us know if you're enjoying this. Put a one in the comments if you're enjoying and let us know if you can hear us actually, because I haven't seen much activity, but uh, maybe people are busy eating their lunch um, on the East Coast. It's like noon over here. So number one, find your purpose, values, and impact. And then number two is celebrate your wins, right? No matter how small your wins are, I would say celebrate your wins because sometimes I think as humans, we're just a little bit negative um, or sometimes we're a little bit hard on ourselves, especially as a nursing student or as a new grad. So I say, give yourself grace, right? Because especially there's a lot of new graduates now that are graduating. Uh, it's graduation season, right? Um, happening now. And a lot more will be graduating in May. So I say celebrate small wins. Celebrate the fact that you even went to nursing school, that you got through it, and that you're graduating. That is a significant win. Uh, and don't get so nervous about the NCLEX. You are prepared and you will pass. You just have to believe that you're prepared and nursing school has prepared you. Um, and here's Samantha. I just had a conversation with her before this. Samantha, thank you for coming through. Um, she is a nursing student in Florida and is looking to come back to the East Coast, to the New Jersey, New York area. So shout out to Samantha, thank you. And let us know if you have any comments, questions, um, Samantha, or anybody else watching. So I would say, yeah, celebrate small wins. What are your thoughts on that in nursing in general? Oh, I think you're on mute. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I actually have a mug that says you're mute, so it's hilarious. <laughs> So celebrating the small wins is such a huge deal because I feel as though in our profession where we're constantly giving and we don't always get the overwhelming gratitude from the people we take care of. And sometimes from the higher ups in the C-suite and all that kind of stuff, the way they show gratitude is kind of not what we really want type situation. And so whenever you find yourself just leaving a shift or whatever it is you do, even at the out, away from the bedside and you come off the day and you think, you know what? I really got through to that person. Mm -hmm. That's a win. No matter what you did that day that went wrong, find a silver lining, celebrate that win. Exactly. Celebrate that win because that's the thing that propels you forward. And uh, yesterday I had three people, three people. I was on the phone with them and they said, oh my gosh, since I started this process, you're the only one who has actually advocated for me and pushed through and this, that, and the other. And I was smiling over here going, oh my God, three people in one day. So what did I do? I went for a great a walk. I told everybody that I could. I have the most amazing siblings. So I just called my sisters and I was like, I just had the most awesome day today, <laughs> you know, type situation. So tell yeah. people, the people that love you and want to see you happy, tell them about those small wins, celebrate it however you see fit, because that is the gas that moves you forward. And the thing about small wins is that once you celebrate those, you're giving yourself the gift of reflection to be able to say, how do I replicate this? How do I multiply this and keep giving the same, you know, impact and better. Once you ignore those wins, what you're saying to yourself is that is not necessary. This is where your growth stagnates is when you don't, like uh, uh, Dr. Lauren was saying, 
give yourself the grace, step back, breathe, mm -hmm. and say, what do I need to do next? Right? Mm -hmm. Give yourself the grace, celebrate those small wins, tell somebody, post about it, you right. know, scream it from a rooftop. And yes. only those who care about you will understand why that is very important to you. It makes all the difference. Keeps that joy, that, you know, fountain of joy just flowing. And I wanted to touch upon something too. Um, again, we're talking about finding joy in nursing and in your nursing career. But if you think about it, right, um, if you're not happy in your own personal life and with yourself, right, it's going to be very difficult to be able to find joy in whatever work that you do, even if it's not nursing or whatever it is in general. So learn to be able to give yourself grace, like we talked about, self-love, acceptance, all that stuff. Be able to find joy in your own personal life, because honestly, I truly believe that being happy and finding joy is a choice that we make every day a decision we make in different moments, different challenges. We're all going to have challenges, whether it's in our professional life or personal life. Um, so you have the choice. You have the power of choice. And really perspective um, is very important. And we're going to get into that in one of our uh, other uh, tips. I don't want to get in too much into that. But the other big point that I want to bring out, Georgia, is not only to celebrate small wins for yourself, right, but elevate others, right? Elevate other nurses, other people in your life because um, I just feel like it's important to have fun and celebrate just life, right? So that's the point number two. And if you happen to be watching we're, and just joining us now, we're talking about how to find joy in your nursing career. Um, we have five tips. The number one tip was finding purpose, uh, your values, and what impact you want to make. Tip number two is celebrate small wins. And then we're going to get into tip number three, which is a big one. Um, but we're going to get through it. It's basically building supportive relationships, uh, which is huge in nursing, right? Going to networking events. I was just talking to Samantha earlier about this. If you're watching Samantha, uh, shout out again to you. She went to the NSNA, which is the Nursing Student Convention in Florida. I'm so sad that I didn't go to get to go, but next year I really want to go. Um, she talked about all the different people she met, all the networking that she did, and how um, inspiring it was to be around other, other nursing students and other leaders. So I think going to conferences, going to events, and really building those relationships is important. And then mentorship. I always tie mentorship. Be a mentor or seek out a mentor. Do both. Because I think that also... I think brings a lot of joy to nurses in general. So what are your thoughts on, on that? I completely agree. And I find that when I talk to other nurses and they keep asking me, how are you able to do all this stuff? I'm like, I pay for some of these <laughs> networking events. I don't always go to them through work. Most of my speaking and educational talks have been through work, but <laughs> I have paid for quite a bit of networking events and just going there and being around people who are like-minded and you will find that, you, you know, there is a whole other world out there of other nurses and for anything. And this is not just for nursing. This is for anything you're interested in. Right. right anything right. you're interested in. I realize that people want more out of life, but don't want to sit in that bubble of that's an ambitious person, that's a driven person, because they're worried about, oh, you're doing too much. You're a bedside nurse. That's what nurses do. If you're not at the bedside, then you're not a nurse. That is not true. Because oh, yeah. whatever soft skills that you're learning through a network event, a leadership management, personal development, whatever the situation may be, even financial, mm -hmm. you're bringing it to your work because it's part of your life now. You're bringing it to work. Those soft skills are what make you actually a well-rounded human being and an excellent nurse in the first place. So being able to go out there and talk to people is awesome. There's a book by Marcus um, Buckingham, and it's Love and Work. And he had my heart because I, I attended a segment of a conference with him speaking. And mm -hmm. the moment he mentioned nurses, I was like, you have my attention, you know. <laughs> type situation, but <laughs> he literally is, when these network events, I'm finding out because I'm, a, the way I see 
life is different in the sense that I'm trying to bake love into everything. And I know it sounds very aspirational, but that's what you're doing when you're doing these networking events and going to these conferences is baking love into your your life, which is baking love into your career. And I know mm -hmm. workflows that work sometimes do not work. The way hospitals have been built for how many, for a hundred years, do not necessarily work in 2024. But find ways to add joy to that, bake that love into it in whatever process that you're doing, because it can get kind of rote sometimes where you're just like, okay, now I do this and then I do that. Have you thought about mm -hmm. sharing something that you've learned with a coworker that you can trust? Um, this is where the nerd, all the nerds that, that I know need to show up, be a nerd, let the other nurses know you're a nerd. And I know you're going to get heat for it at work. I know you're going to, but guess what? That's what those conferences are for. You go. And then when something happens, you go, I have a solution, right? Exactly. Tell me that would bring you joy. Exactly. And that's what it is. Yeah. I think <laughs> in our next points that come up, um, it, it leads us into our fourth point which is having right an attitude of gratitude, finding positivity and having a growth mindset, right? Because it's very easy to be negative sometimes um, and complain about things, right? But we need to take action like we talked about before um, to be able to make a change, make an impact and not say, oh, well, that's just the way it is and it's not working, right? Well, try to make a change and see what you can do to fix it so it can be a more enjoyable, a more healthy work environment for everybody. And then you can feel fulfilled. However, even me, like I started in the emergency department, I absolutely love the emergency department and I advocate for new nurses to find the areas that they're passionate about and pursue it. So like Samantha's interested in oncology um, and we had a great talk before this. And I think that it's very important for us to support our new generation of nurses or even each other as we transition into different roles, different areas. And like you said, it's not the conventional type of things. Like you talked about having your own business. I also have my own nurse career coaching business. I also speak, you speak. Um, nurses need to know that you don't have to just stay in a box, right? There's so many op different opportunities that we can do, create our own, you know, income because, Hey, some people, you know, it, money brings is a tool that can bring happiness as well, because if you're stuck in a job and you feel like you're you're not really um, getting what you deserve, then you're not going to be happy. So you can easily go down the lane of being burnt out. And I think that's when you need to do the reflection and step back and say, you know, maybe this is not the place for me anymore. Let me find something else where I could feel more fulfilled and I could... Um, fill my cup so I can, you know, give back to others. And I think that gratitude is so important. And then just realizing that you do need a switch or you do need a change. So I knew that I wanted to go into education. So I made that switch. But for a period there in the ER, um, it was overwhelming. I was getting a little burnt out and I could see myself uh, not being um, as joyful as I should. And I'm, I'm a typically happy, very happy person. So then I was like, yeah, I, it's time for me to go. I need to go into something else. So I shifted into education. Um, so, you know, growth mindset. Also, we talked about education quite a bit. I think as humans, we're constantly wanting to grow, do different things. Um, and we, we talked about learning a lot. So what are your thoughts on, you know, gratitude, posit bringing positivity into nursing and the growth mindset? So the growth mindset is very important. Because whenever we finish college, nobody teaches us how to learn other things. You know, you get the degree and you go, thank God this is over. I get to make money as a nurse. And your first paycheck, you do your little happy dance, you go shopping, you take care of your family, you throw a nice little big, hey, you know, I'm a nurse now. And then it wears off. This is the part where after a few years, even some, depending on the, some people's work environments are so terrible, they already, it wears off within about six months to a year. But the lucky ones like me, it took years to get to that point where I was just like, this is not it, you know? So having a growth mindset also means that you should be able to be humble to learn how to learn again. That is a hard part for people. It's, it's just 
I don't want to be a beginner, but we all have to be a beginner. If you really want to grow the way your heart desires, you have to step back and say, I'm a novice at this thing. But just like I, I went through nursing school, graduated, I've had a career, I can learn again, right? Nice. Growth mindset for the new, brand new nurses, highly important. Learn how to take criticism and people who are going to be mean to you, remember it's about them, it's not about you. The way if they treat you badly, it's a them problem. No right. problem. Right, but you need to also learn to set boundaries. That's, yeah, oh, that's the next thing I was about to say. But after that, you said <laughs> very important, <laughs> highly important because you will be run over. So learn to set boundaries, and boundaries are for you, and not necessarily, you know, the other person. It's about protecting your your energy. That's really what it is. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And the other thing that we're talking about, we talk about growth, um, growth mindset. What's the other thing? Gratitude. Gratitude. gratitude, gratitude. gratitude. Positivity. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. When I started gratitude practice, I was blown away by the, how effective it was at bringing me back to center and just bringing ease to my life. So the first thing, this is, this is as practical as it gets, is when you're going to work, you have to say, you have to re re reframe and say, I get to go to work. I get to make a paycheck. I get to take care of my family. I get to do this. The first few days, you're going to, every day, just do that practice out loud in front of the mirror. You can document it in a journal, however you see fit. The first few days, you're going to go, oh, yeah, this is great. This is awesome. Thank you for the sun. And, and then you run out of things to be grateful for. I'm telling no, you, you that is that. Listen, this is the part where, you know, everybody goes, but I don't know what to be grateful for anymore. And I'm like, there is more. This is where you have to sit back, give yourself a grace. Walking, wake up. Yes. talking, seeing. You have to learn to feel it all, <laughs> all those feelings and be able to express this and let it go. So right. the gratitude practice is, it's, it's almost magical when you actually put the effort into it. Yeah. And I've seen people leave toxic environments through a gratitude practice because it can be hard when you've worked for somewhere for eight, 10 years and suddenly you know, I need to leave from here. And money mindset with nurses is terrible. We are the worst statistically with money. So <laughs> because we're working 12 hour shifts. Listen, you know. I don't even have my book near me, but I wrote a book called Nurses Making Money Moves. Yes. Nurses Guide to Starting a Business. Definitely check that out if anybody out there is looking to maybe start their own side hustle uh, or business as, as we do in coaching, consulting, uh, because we have a lot of transferable skills. And, yes. You know, you can make money with your expertise. Um, I'm actually going to be doing a, a talk tomorrow for the Hudson Valley nurses in New York on um, turning your expertise into profits. So I'm super excited about that. Um, I wanted to shout out. Um, you Nanza um, Ahmed, hopefully I said it correctly. She said, I reached that after five years. I think she's talking about maybe wanting to change or finding something different. Um, yeah, definitely. And if you haven't found something new, definitely reach out. I'm a nurse career coach. I can help you with that. Um, yeah. And being grateful for life. Um, and then guess what? I also wrote a gratitude journal I mean, made a journal. You can find it on Amazon. This I'm a promote all day. You can find it on Amazon. You could go to doctor, just type in Dr. Farah Laurent and put 90 days of gratitude journal. Because I found with the work that I do with nurses, when I help them in their careers, you know, whether it's finding a new job, going into education, leadership, or maybe a new grad, right? The gratitude and the mindset that we talk about is so important. And I truly believe in manifestation. And you have to believe, I say to the core, to your cell, like the cells, that if you want to do something, like you said, take action, it is possible. I believe in the law of attraction. And gratitude, really, it's all about a mindset of abundance. And you're not living in a place of like scarcity. It's very hard to continue that and sustain it, but it is possible. So I think it is very important to find joy, not only in nursing, but in your own personal life. And then think about, like you said, what we're doing, taking care of others, or at least a service, either if it's, whether it's direct patient care or indirect patient care, we need to take ourselves out of it sometimes because in the emergency department, I sometimes got to tears thinking about what these people are going through, right? Think about it. 
and you talked about baking love. I love that analogy, baking love into things because you know, you know, I can't remember who said this, but they're like people usually operate from two different areas. Either they operate from a place of fear or a place of love. So think about when people come to a hospital or even any outpatient setting or whatever, they're scared, they're anxious, they're not sure what to expect. So as the first contact, a lot of times we're there to like help alleviate that. So we need to like take our whatever's going on and be of service to others. And I think that's the greatest gift of all to be, like it's a privilege to be a nurse, to be in these patients' lives. Like it's such a vulnerable time, right? Um, and it, that's why I love nursing. Uh, it's like, I, I can't even describe it. It's so rewarding, right? And I think that's like when you give, you're happier, right? So you know, sorry, it was long-winded, but, you know, <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? So, so here's the thing about um, us as nurses is that we give so much. And I, I, I think what the pandemic did for the world is to open up a portal, a spiritual portal. And without going into so much detail is that people are starting, starting to understand energetics and give it language. Right. And a lot of times what happens is we, you know, they, we've been told when you come into the building, leave your problems at home, blah, blah, blah. We're human. It's difficult to leave those problems at home. Right. Right. So here's what I'm suggesting for self-care. Is that the point you were trying to make uh, right there, doctor? OK. So mm -hmm. when you have those moments where there's a lot on your heart and on your mind, you have to acknowledge yourself first and foremost. Yeah. And say, this is what's going on outside of this hospital or whatever setting you're in. Mm -hmm. And it is important because I'm important because my whole health and wellness coaching is learning to put yourself at the top of the priority list, which is a huge thing that nurses in particular are terrible at doing, you know, because you have, I, I don't know how many nurses I'll talk to and then they'll be like, well, but if I just do this thing for this person, I'm like, no, do it for yourself first. Right. It's acknowledge how you're feeling mentally and emotionally. Find your own bearings energetically. Are you in a good mood? Are you in a bad mood? What what and give yourself the things that you actually need. Because a lot of times in you know past experience, I'll have people show up. I was charged, I was uh, you know, I've been an assistant manager and managing people is one of the things I enjoyed doing as a manager was making sure energetics were right. And once you come in through there, acknowledge that and see how you can adjust yourself because then you know how people come in, they're rude to everybody. That, you know, everything just suffers. Mm -hmm. That does not make you feel joyful in your own self, number one. Number two, you're, you're adding the toxicity to the environment and the negativity to the environment. So instead of trying to shut down your own feelings, try to acknowledge them and give them a space to exist somewhere. So that when you're on a break in the break room, I know nurses and break rooms, I don't know how many times we go giggle there, we laugh, we cry, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. Do the break room thing. I was great at power naps. I'll take a 10 minute power nap in the bathroom somewhere. I'm sorry, guys. Anybody who's listening, whoever tried to get me out of the bathroom, I was taking a nap for 10 minutes. And <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so give I'm not even gonna ask. <laughs> give yourself the gift of your own self because the moment you give yourself the acknowledgement that i am not a hundred percent mentally and emotionally here mm -hmm. and give it a space to exist somewhere in your mind your patience everything just changes i right. think with the gratitude practice added on top of that with understanding your own mission vision and values in life and all that alignment no matter how rough your outside life gets once you do that self-care it takes practice and i'm not talking about doing the Starbucks coffee or eating Taco Bell or whatever. I'm talking about internal self-care. The outward things are easy, right? Mm -hmm. They're very easy, but it's the internal ones that have a lot of like massage. Oh, yes, please. I do love my Starbucks and a little bit of uh, retail therapy makes all the difference. But in that environment, in that moment where you're just not a hundred percent, give yourself the gift of saying, I feel terrible. Right. I am mad, sad, happy, frustrated, whatever the situation may be. And then ask yourself, what can I give myself in this moment 
to get away from those that negativity so that I can actually be a pleasant person and contribute to my environment because we're natural givers. And right. guess what? Good or bad, we will multiply it. So why don't you multiply the good, right? Right. And I think that's, you know, that's into our last point, which is practice self-care that we kind of transition into about finding joy in nursing, um, practicing self-care. It is very hard, I think, for nurses. And it's funny, actually, I did my doctoral work. I changed it several times, you know, due to different things. But um, I created a toolkit for stress reduction strategies for nurses. And there are a lot of evidence-based things that is in that toolkit. And I hope to publish it very soon. Um, but simple things, you know, like listening to music. I'm a huge, you know, music fan. And I know a lot of people are. Something simple as listening to music 30 minutes um, a day can reduce, like physiologically, can reduce your blood pressure, things like that, right? So you may think, you know, you don't have to do anything elaborate. It could be going for walks, going outside, things like that. Um, but if you're in that space where like you're not feeling well, you're burnt out, then guess what? You need to just take some time and don't feel guilty about taking time. I want to give a shout out. I don't know if she's still there to Damaris Adele. Um, hello. Thank you for coming. And always nice to see you. And then uh, Munaza, she says, after five years, I reached a point where I had to change, thus became an NP. I will look for your book on Amazon. Yes, look for my book. It's called um, uh, 30 Days of Gratitude. I think I have it here. Hold up, y'all. Hold on. <laughs> I'm, I'm horrible, right? This is what it is. It's um, It's got this like gold thing right here. So 90 days of gratitude journal. This is it. Find it on Amazon. Um, you know, because it's so, it's so important to take the time. Uh, what else does she say? Grateful for you and all the knowledge you share with us all. Thank you so much. I love you guys. You guys are my tribe. Um, all my nursing peeps and, you know, Georgia, you've gave, given so much value to them out there. Um, Self-awareness is important. If you happen to be watching the replay, definitely put any comments, questions out there. And if you're still watching, let us know if this was very helpful, valuable content. Put a one in the comments. Um, and then we're going to recap Georgia, right? So how to find joy in nursing. What was number one? Do you remember? Purpose. <laughs> I'm trying to get, thank God. I was about to, I was. Turn it on my mind. Yes, purpose. Yes. Number one is purpose. Mm -hmm. Find um, what impact you want to make, and your impact and purpose can change, and that's okay over your nursing career. Um, but typically, I think your values probably don't change, right? Like no. Your mm -hmm. all that stuff. Um, and then number two, oh, you want to put yourself on mute? I think something is like echoing again. Um, just for a minute. Number two is celebrating small wins. Thank you. Um, and then giving yourself grace. Number three is really building a supportive network and relationship building through, you know, mentorship, whether you're a mentor or um, a mentee, going to events, going to nursing conferences, different things like that. And it doesn't just have to be nursing. It could be other events as well, especially if you're interested in business. You could go to business conferences, things like that. Um, and look out for making nurses making money moves. And... Number four, growth mindset, atti attitude of gratitude and positivity. And then number five is practicing self-care. And Georgette has a business where she helps with that. So if you want to talk about that, Georgette, maybe just lower your volume down a little bit and, and talk to them about how they can work with you and where they can find you as we wrap up. Oh, yes. Um, I am a health and wellness coach. And I've been a health and wellness coach now uh, for two years. The name of my business is called Evolve Fullness because we're in constant growth and we're constantly, you know, evolving. The difference is taking action. So I have, uh, that's the website, Evolve. Yeah, I'll drop it in later in the comments so they can see. Yeah, I will put it there. And um, basically what I do is get people back to center because the majority of us live outside of our bodies. We're so dissociated, mind, body, and spirit. And we function in that way because our brains are amazing machines that just keep us moving 
whatever it feels safe to do, the brain is going to allow you to do. And what I found is that since I've been coaching, uh, more people kind of, it's like you're snapping back into yourself and you go, what am I doing? Is this really who I am? Just like Dr. Lauren said, your core values don't change, but the things around you change. Mm-hmm. that your experience change you so you have to evolve accordingly so mm-hmm. part of that is my strategy to make sure that whoever i come in contact with is able to kind of snap back into their bodies that's why the book was named coming back to my body snap what back into it we're gonna find your book on amazon it's on amazon it's on amazon so it just gives you an opening into finding language for your internal world so that you can easily express it to someone and that's one of the reasons why we tend to be burned out is because we don't know how to describe what we're dealing with because we don't have a language for it so that's what the book is about there are prompts in there um there's a chapter on grace there's a chapter on surrender there's just plenty of um just things where you can actually put your own notes in there and figure yourself out and the people who have been able to that i'm coaching right now and who are reading the book tend to be able to find that i've seen so many switches and you know it it might be a small thing but it's huge that one new thought new language you acquire changes the world that you live transformation right Mm -hmm. so um and then lastly where can they find you where are you most active i am most active on linkedin and instagram Uh, my instagram is evolve fullness Mm -hmm. and um i'm trying to i'm actually building back up i did have a Facebook group, but right now I'm in the in the midst of trying to move across state lines. So I'm really distracted and focusing on my day job and coaching <laughs> and trying to move right now. But more is coming. I'll talk more about the book and uh, have more interactions with people. I hope to do way more lives. I've been doing that. I'm part of um, an Empower Wellness series here on LinkedIn. And so I do talks every two weeks about wellness in general whether it's with work our personal lives and everything so yeah awesome and i think that this is so great because um you know i'm glad that we met and um linkedin is such a powerful uh platform um you know we're also streaming on um, twitter facebook and youtube but um just the power of linkedin you know connect with other people on linkedin find yourself a mentor find yourself a career coach find yourself a wellness coach like georgia Um, Because you don't have to go through things alone. We're here to help and help you transition in whatever area that you're in. And again, thank you so much. It's so important. Like we talked about mental health, wellness, all that stuff in nursing, because um, we need to be able to support each other. So again, Georgia, thank you so much for watching. I mean, everybody, thank you for watching. And thank you, Georgia, for being a guest. Um, I really appreciate it. And then any last words? You are the universe in ecstatic motion. That is a line from one of Rumi's many points. Mm -hmm. Many poems, just you are the universe in ecstatic motion. You are important. You are at the top of the priority list. Learn to put yourself there. It's not selfish. What it does is it, it makes you happy because now you have the right mindset, the right heart set to be able to take care of the people that you want to take care of. And then I wanted to share, I'm reading this book right now. I love it. It's called You Squared. And then we're going to leave you guys alone. Um, but there's a there's a part here. It says, quit trying harder. And it says, more of the same usually gives you more of the same, right? So you need to be able to make some changes and take action. Um, and really, I hope that everybody does find joy in nursing and in your personal life. Um, so again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Georgette. Um, and we will see you soon. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.